Hi, hello everyone. My name is Mr. Fruit, and welcome to GG Over Easy. In today's episode, we are joined by a special guest. Oh, oh, I, oh I gotta look technically where. Yeah, where am Fallout I? Fallout put down. Where is you he can point for down. Me? Point down. Yeah, Fallout plays. Uh, great to have him here. We yeah. uh, discuss some of his lore. We discuss a lot of the big gaming news. You know, PS5 revealed, games revealed, a lot of Destiny 2 news. We answer some Patreon questions, but we'll also lead off with the meme of the week. Oh, oh yeah, meme you of the week. thought I forgot. I really did. I was like, <laughs> I'll just tell them later. So this week we decided to just literally go off of the most upvoted within the amount of time since the episode released. And unfortunately, <laughs> and I have to be the one that describes this. So here's the best part. One, I have to try and... um. I'll I'll put it up on the video and then I'll just have to do my best to describe it for you audio listeners. <laughs> so that's our meme of the week. Uh, oh, and that is our first meme of the week. If you want to be entered on meme of the week, it's easy. All you have to do is to me submit oh, yeah. a meme. And not just any. I saw somebody Credit uploading like the, mango the, the cosmic crow. Thank oh, you. Cosmic Crow, yeah. congratulations. Yeah, yeah you just don't credit. upload normal random memes. They have to like yeah. kind of associate yourself with the show or the brand. I saw somebody just uploading like mango sale charts. And I was like, no. That <laughs> and they don't all like have that. to be podcasts or whatever. So it's like videos yeah. or something. Because I know some people were like, yo, I just showed up to this thing and I don't watch GG Over Easy. I don't get any of this. <laughs> so, well, maybe you should just listen to it. But who knows oh. if they're here. Maybe anyway, this is the first episode right now. It's time to listen yeah. to it. Let's go. That's the episode. Hope you guys enjoy it. <gasps> Let's get into it. <sighs> Wait, no. How do I? No, you just I say, don't say it. Yeah, you, the Heidi Ho. Like, yeah. yeah, it's a GG Over Easy podcast. Episode 40. <laughs> Like We've we done said, 40 Bob. Ds and I still don't know how to do an intro. You were like this and then you like you started moving your mouth and I was like, his mic's broken. I started it's stuttering. I was like, ha, ha, hi, hi. I was like, wait, I don't, I don't do this. Like, whatever, dude. We, we, spent, we spent the entirety of the past 10 minutes telling how Fallout how, how organized and just professional we are. And even as we start the recording, we're just the worst. We finna expose ourselves to our guests. Were you, were you were you expecting like like Fallout? Were you expecting like a super like oh wow these guys oh these guys Budget, run like a we got like managers. Oh, 50. Like wow these guys are for real. I, I thought someone would come get me with a limo. Bring me <laughs> a recording studio. It's like we're doing Discord. Wait a minute, they didn't show up. <laughs> Who did I pay? Uh, did, your, did your Apple Watch come in the mail? That should uh, that comes oh, to the every, yes. yes uh, awesome. should be there soon. That's one day we'll get there, right? We're big enough. We're Apple just give us watches to give every guest. We can fly him in. Yeah, one day. But in the meantime, episode 40. That's right. The one. big 4 0. Wait. No, 41, right? Oh, right. No. Yeah, yes. we're 41. <laughs> yeah. 41. Yeah. See? <laughs> I knew that. I knew that. It's episode 41. Anyway. It's the most professional podcast you've ever been on, easily. The, the, the next 10 are going to be the guest episodes. And then moving forward, maybe like every other episode or something. And to kick off the guest, well, two, two and a half months, the guest 41s, 40s, is Fallout Plays. Fallout. Yay. Hey, thank you very much for having me. No, thank I didn't you know for I, coming I was going to be the first guest in like a series of guests. Yes. That's awesome. Yeah. Thank yes. you very much. No pressure. Yes. Other than the Fruit Summit guests, <laughs> you are the first, yeah. like the first guest on here. Oh, that's officially. awesome. I'm going to do everyone else later. On the show of favor, <laughs> set the bar. <laughs> set the bar really low. No, that's good. I mean, that's how we do it. That's how we do it. No, no, no. Maybe. I should pick up a rupee. <laughs> so, we're hopping into this episode. We got a lot to talk about, ironically. Um, aside from the beautiful <laughs> Fallout. Lot, yeah. Like, this was a big week for at least video games. I mean, we normally have a lot to talk about, but it's never, like, actually pertaining to video games except for Destiny drama. But now there's news good and a little bad but mainly great so that's exciting we won't have to uh just be super pessimistic in front of our guest um my mother always said that was rude so but before we do that we should get to know fallout a little better for the people at home who don't know who fallout is we need the lore fallout's lore lore for me are you what do you do I don't. And that's a big question. I, like, I mean, <laughs> yeah, yeah. But I mean, okay. How about how about how about how about this? 
Paula, what is your game of choice to play as a top tier, up and coming, been established, mm. not up and coming at all, content creator? Uh, unfortunately, it's Destiny 2. <laughs> yes! <laughs> My favorite MMO. It's so good to hear. Yes. Just maybe you, I thought it was going to be maybe Fallout was maybe your favorite one. No, yeah, well, Curveball. Yeah. Let's uh, actually start with that the, lore. Yeah, sure, what's your name? I get that all the time. Yeah, okay. So like way back when, I'm a Halo guy or maybe a former Halo guy. I don't know. I grew hey, up hey. on the box. Um, you're right. among brothers. There yes. you go. All Welcome. Right, feeling it. You're safe here. <laughs> <laughs> so, you know, Halo 2 is like the dawn of Xbox Live. I was like, yeah, I want a cool gamer tag, man. And like the more I got into Halo, mm -hmm. all the, the pros that I followed had cool short one word names washy like pistol uh, ogre. Ogre. One, no, ogre pistol two, lunchbox. Neighbor. yeah hi Damn. they're all cool yeah, all cool one word you're names you're so right and i was like i need a one word name and like i was kind of looking at my shelf of games so it's like oh fallout this is before fallout 3 came out because i feel like when fallout 3 came out everyone kind of that's like, when it became the right of people jumped in before that it was like oh what's that game mm -hmm. it's like weird on pc um and i just remember good me. times <laughs> playing with my friend used to play back in the day at his house and i was like oh fallout i was like it's a good memory it's a good word short it's cool has like a like a nuclear vibe to it. it's like yeah fallout i was like i'll, I'll be back there's no way that's taken <laughs> <laughs> so yeah so i was just fallout and i played bunch of halo i had a lot of fun and Wait, then you got the og here. gamer tag just fallout just no like, i had oh, no okay. i got like a bunch of i's and x's in there that would have been great that's how you but the i's and the x's are yeah. how you show people that's your mlg <laughs> right <That's laughs> the <show>. absolutely <laughs> so later i was like feeling that i wanted to get into content creation Wanted to get into the YouTube game. And I was like, what should I call the channel? I was like, well, my tag is Fallout. I just want to play games. So <laughs> Fallout plays? Sure. The, the number one question you probably that get is, are you ever going to play Fallout? <laughs> oh my God, are you a Fallout fan? Like once a month. Someone will come. Really? It just once much. a month? Yeah, just once a month. Early on, it happened all the time, especially on Twitter. People would tag me in like big posts about Fallout. It's like, dude, I made this really cool fallout fan art and there'll be all these fallout news accounts tagged <laughs> and then me at the end. <laughs> i just picked i just picked my name from a box dude i don't know what you're thank goodness you know thank good you were like not like a destiny child's fan and then like you're a desk and then you were just destiny so now you're oh. destiny plays and then you just play destiny yeah so. i i should have done a random rng like childish gambino how he did like the mobster name generator for his oh career. is that how they got that yeah, yeah that's know how that. he got that yeah, I should have just pulled it out of the hat. <laughs> Less well, I tried for my original when I wanted to change my gamer tag when I was old double down nine. I wanted to change it. And I know Scene Anners, that's how he did it. He got his name from the original Xbox random generator where you could just go in, choose like new gamer tag, and randomize. First thing it was Scene Anners. It was like, all right, that's such yeah. A, oh, that's a yeah. nutty good So I was like, like let me try that. <laughs> Okay, couple years later, so everything is just like there's nothing creative. It's all the same little phrases. You can't, and then it's like, here's a here's a recommendation. I go, oh, cool. And like, actually, that one's taken. But here are like ten suggestions with like zero zero seven six x x. I was like, why did you even? So I had to make my. Why own. are you gonna give me suggestions if I can't even use these? Yeah, but I never got anything as cool as Sheen Anners. So I had to make my own luck. Just sitting there eating a bowl of grapes. I'm like, you know what? Do you remember I like what, fruit. like your, what was the first game Fallout plays played on the channel? It was actually Halo. I think the first YouTube video I ever made was a video because Halo Master Chief Collection was coming out. Oh, and I was no. like really hyped about it. Yeah, I know. <laughs> no, no. So, so the video. Once was again, like, you are in similar like area. I, I'm glad I'm among friends. <laughs> but like, I was like, yeah, a lot of people that I know hadn't played uh, Halo combat evolved like they started with three or something like that so i was like mm -hmm. why don't i make a couple videos showing people a couple tips and tricks for halo combat evolved because i really like that game so i made that i was originally going to be like a, just a halo channel <laughs> and then the master chief collection came out and dear god <laughs> you're like couldn't eh. play a game like it was 
laughably bad. Like, do you guys remember there were so many glitches? You could get into a game and uh, you could, if you were like the host of the lobby, you could open up the list of who was in the game and you could kick people. Even if they were on the <laughs> other team, you could kick people out of the, I mean, <laughs> the that game was, it's still pretty broken on like bad. the Steam version. Like I saw a video and like someone jumps from like P3 on midship on the like just the bottom mid and lands on top of them and splatters them. Like well, the game is still so broken. There was also that glitch where you could just shoot your like your shotgun shot and you could completely miss. Like they were shooting at the ground. Oh, and they were like teleporting. And it would just teleport yeah. and kill people. Like how did you? It was so bad. I bought an and Xbox we... One for that game, so you can really? imagine my disappointment. Oh, oh that hurts. We both did. Yeah, just literally a week where you couldn't even like play it. Like servers straight up didn't yeah. work, and then you'd yeah. get in, and then you're like, "What is this garbage? How do you mess this up?" It's so disappointing. Yeah, I felt the same way, and uh, <laughs> my original plan was like, oh yeah, dude, Halo Master Chief Collection. It's going to be the content, boys. It's going to be like a <laughs> Halo guy. That's what they're going to know me for. And then like two days in, I was like, yeah, this isn't going to work. <laughs> <laughs> that, so, was, that was your yeah. life, just course correcting you like, eh, yep. well, maybe and we just... Uh... Yeah, my, my fiance and I were already like, day one, we were looking forward to Destiny. Like a really dorky story, we had pre-ordered these huge banners, which we framed. We spent <laughs> money. We spent our paychecks <laughs> getting these banners framed. Uh, they're somewhere in the living room, I think. Uh, one of the Titan, one of the Hunter, these huge, beautiful banners framed. And we had them hanging in our oh. living room before the game came out. <laughs> I know what we're like, you're talking about. You do stand. The, the big yeah, ones. Yeah, oh, we stand. The, the big long ones. Yeah, you know. The, at the yeah. bottom, they have like Warlock, Titan, Hunter, and yeah, with like a little know. color. I only have the Warlock one because oh, the dude. Hunter and Titan ones were sold out. And I was like, well, I'm, I'm lucky because, I mean, I'm going to play Warlock regardless. <laughs> I just have the Gryffindor one. Yeah, yeah. I have that one on my wall too. <laughs> Good call. Yeah, I, I super sick banner. I literally remember the moment. I think we talked about this where I decided what class I was going to do. It was like the Destiny subreddit before it came out, and there was some leak or something ahead of time, and it was a GIF of the Titan doing the Fist of Havoc slam, like Superman. I just saw that. I was like, "All right, I'm playing Titan," <laughs> and I'm, I'm a one trick pony. But I have a banner. Oh, oh, here we go. I don't have one. I have a live saber action. I remember. I remember those banners saber? like vividly. They were sold during the beta, and oh, yeah, that's right. They were, they were like our, our friends were like, "What if the game is bad?" <laughs> yeah. Oh, that's good. I like that. That's the worst class of all. Arios gave it to me for my birthday. What a good guy. Oh, Arios oh. gave that to you. Oh. Quality. I hang it in the tavern. Arios came through with something. Good for him. <laughs> I see we're still, still, the rift still, he, he the rift still through. cuts deep. <laughs> he followed through. So, let, so were you anticipating Destiny? Because for me, it was like, oh, this is Bungie's next game. Was that the same reason for you? Yeah, I mean, we were huge Bungie fans because I met my fiance way back in the day, actually playing Halo 2. That's how oh, we met. Oh, cute. Yeah, it's it's nice. That's awesome. I yeah, like we've known that. each other. That is really cute. It's pretty cute. That's so, a um, weird, your perfect dream couple right there. GPX argue <laughs> and T-Bag you. Like, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, all right. 1v1 me. Loser takes out the trash. Uh, but. <laughs> No, we were we were definitely in on Destiny. We were like, oh yeah, it's Bungie. They're gonna make something cool. But I was like, I wanted because you know, Halo was like a dynasty, especially back then, before it started to like, you know, go downhill. Mm -hmm. But uh, I was like, I'm excited for Destiny. I'm sure Bungie's gonna make another great game. It'll it'll be fun. That'll be my side piece. And uh, I'm gonna be a Halo guy. <laughs> and then I, I just got more into it and I was like, Yeah, this is fun. And then yeah, I, I love it. I still love it. It's not like the always the most consistent game and the community isn't always on the same page, but I still love it and I love where it's taken me today. So, Do you remember what your first Destiny video was? I think it was a guide to the Warlock. I think. Oh, giving oh. people the info. Disgusting. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I Do you remember, remember what yours was, Christian? The thorn, I want to say it was thorn. 
because and then, and then I think after that was like last word. But I think it was Thorn because I made that and I posted it on the Bungie forums back then. I you know I had it was ten sub Andy. Yeah, that's awesome. yeah I was like yeah. ten subscriber Andy. So I was like and not too long later, there's no end beyond. You just popped off. Yeah, but I I remember I put it on the forums. All the comments were trash. They're like, you suck. But it got like 3,500 views, which for me was like, not bad. I'll post more Destiny. <laughs> and so I did. And then nothing really popped off until the No Land, no Land Beyond and the whatever the husk of the, whatever was before the Necrochasm. Oh, the, yeah. The, oh, husk, yeah. Yeah, the husk of the, the husk, of, husk of the pit. Corn Husker, I don't what I don't, was that called? I don't know if it might be Husker the Pit, but whatever. Like the thing you had to upgrade. I remember oh, yeah. I made a commercial about that. Um and I I remember making that thing too. I was like, I have no idea what I'm gonna make. This is a stupid idea, but I can probably get it done real quick. And I did, and of course that's the one that like explodes. Off. I was like, what? dude, that is the dream. <laughs> like, I mean, I yeah, don't but, know what I'm doing, but I can make it quick and it yeah. pops off. Because I think Blue, I was, was like leaving first? for a trip, but what was your first Destiny video, Blue? It, my my first Destiny video actually super popped off immediately. No, uh, it was the the Zer. I mean, popped off. Yeah, it was the Zer video. Oh, uh, no. it was the Zer video where it was make it rain, and I was like, dude, I went to college <laughs> for this. Like, I might as well use my degree for something besides <laughs> my work. So I. <laughs> I posted a video on the Destiny subreddit. I got like 2,000 upvotes. I was like, what? I go away for a couple hours like, oh, wow, this is wow, this is pretty cool. And then not even a couple weeks later, I'm pretty sure the my dumb little videos I started making from those are the only reason Fruit talked to me. He was like, who's this loser? Oh, he's not that bad. No, I don't I even... I don't. I don't know if I remember seeing your YouTube channel. It's just your mic. It was, yeah, it was, it was, it was, it was after <laughs> we did that, that uh, Nightfall, right? Yeah, well, I just remember it's like you had a good mic, you were funny, <laughs> and I was like, "Yeah, that's okay, great. That's that's all I really got. Let's see if he wants to do something." Uh, you didn't know you were in an interview process, but congratulations! You had, <laughs> yeah, you're, hired. you're hired. So, with that Fallout, you started with Halo. Obviously, it went pretty awry pretty soon. So, what did you do from there? Um. I just wanted to make content for a game I was enjoying, and uh, that just kind of turned into Destiny. Uh, but were you guys? I got a question for you. Like, were all of you content creators from like from the beginning? Like, you just went all in on content creation. Did either of you? Did any of you have like day jobs that you were going back and forth between stuff like that? Well, I just remember. A Christian Christian was making like this the 60 second reviews and then you're making other videos too uh that was <laughs> Maybe, like we're just getting like 50,000 <laughs> views like they're just getting traction and stuff like that and then I we were just going to the same school and Christian was like do you want to like record a video and I was like uh like I got homework to do because I had an old and mic then, I could give you yeah so like I met up at like where his dorm was and like picked up a microphone the and then blue he's like, snowball. we're going to record with this guy named Blue, uh, who like I did a nightfall with. Uh, he's funny. And I was like, okay. And then so like Blue joined like the PS4 like party that we did. And then like we just recorded like uh, I think we just played like a game like of like the trio game, whatever that was. Yeah, it was uh, skirmish. Yeah. It was One of them was rusted. Yeah. No, Twilight Gap. I remember that. Yeah. And then so like and then. I, I knew Christian was like in traction. So I was like, are you sure you like want to try this? He's like, ah, what's the worst that could happen? Like we're saying like, they don't like it. And then we just never make it again. And then people really liked it. Yeah. And then it kind of just, I was like, this is a lot of fun and way better than anything else I could be doing. So good for you, man. For like a long time. I was, uh, cause I'm, I'm definitely older than y'all. Y'all are young bucks. And I appreciate that. I wish that like the technology to get into the YouTube game was like so much better back when I got out of college, because, like, I feel like it's so... Not what easy, did you get out of college? <laughs> <laughs> uh, what, are we going to play the fun game of how old am I? <laughs> whatever, whatever you think I am, I'm older than, than you think I am. Do you want me to guess? 30, I do not, 30, I don't, I don't want 30, you to guess. 32. Shock. Okay, blue is close. I would guess, like, 31. I had to say, you're just, you've aged really well, 51. 
<laughs> like a Benjamin Button. Uh, no. Okay, I graduated college in 07. Oh, That's wow. Not that That's not that bad, though. It's not that bad. Oh, you, like, like, 78. So you're, so you're, so you're 34. <laughs> I'm, 30, I, I'm 34, yeah. You don't look remotely. You look mid you're Very handsome. I've, <laughs> I, well, thanks, Rob. <laughs> uh, yeah, I just, uh, I'm like, I age weirdly. Like, you guys listen to John Mulaney, stand up comedian John Mulaney? Mm-hmm. He's like, it's really funny. He's like, I don't look old or mature. I just look tired. <laughs> like, <laughs> that, that tall child looks really, <laughs> like, really tired. tired. Yeah. T- take a nap, tall child. Well, uh, what would always blow my mind is like past couple years, especially when I was like 20, 21. And I you watch NFL, and I'm sitting there thinking, like, those guys are my age. And I'm like, yeah. I look like a baby. And those guys look like, I think the padding helps or whatever, but, like, stupid. Oh. They look old, mature. Yeah, How old is he? 20? Now, yeah. Now they're yeah, older dude, than us. And I'm you like, watch people like, in, like, the NBA. Like, this dude is, like, an Olympic god. He's, like, chiseled out of marble. They're like, yeah, this guy's, like, 24. <laughs> like, dear God. Yeah. Wait, has what he filled like? Oryx? You know? Like, come on. <laughs> I have to do some push-ups or something. <laughs> it just doesn't look good. But uh, but yeah, I just like, so that's really awesome that you guys just kind of went at it right out of school because uh, I was trying, you know, careers and I didn't, like nothing spoke to me. I was just earning a paycheck. You know what I mean? I went to school for TV and film production. Hey, and, us uh, too. Yeah, there you go. Oddly, and I was in your doing- favor. Yeah, it, it kind of did. I was doing like random office jobs that kind of tied to like TV and advertising. Uh, but I like there was no joy in it. So even though I would work hard all day, I would like come home and I'd be a content creator at night, which is like hard because you're doing two jobs. And I did that for like a long time, like, a really long time. I actually well, I only went full time this year, if you can believe it, like, in 2020. Yeah, well, when you said that you like went full time and like when you announced it, I was like, wait, he just like I didn't know, like, because you like you uploaded and everything. I was like, that's crazy that you're able to balance a job on top of doing content creation. Because I know just from what Christian does in a day is in itself so hard. I couldn't imagine. It's crazy. Yeah, you were going full time or you, I mean, you're a part time content creator and you're putting out more content than like most full time people are. Like, (laughs) I, yeah, I mean, I tried. It's like, it's a lot of balance because you got to make sure that you're not slipping with the day job. You got to make sure you're spending time with the family. Obviously, got to make sure I spend yeah. time with my lovely fiance, which is like cool. It's cool that we can like game together and stuff. That's great that we can share that time, but it's like, it's just a lot of work. I, I feel like there's a lot of people who want to get into content creation. And if it's calling to you, that's awesome. You should definitely go for it. Uh, but it's it's a lot of work. <laughs> can I? Do you mind me asking what you did? Uh, yeah, I'll uh, yeah, I'll give a little info away. Um, I was in like get ready uh, to the docks. All right, I'll just... <laughs> <laughs> I worked multiple jobs. One for a television network. Oh, that focused around food. I will not comment on which one. Okay, <laughs> network. <laughs> In, in like a production type capacity. And then I worked at kind of like television advertising. Uh-huh. You know, those commercials where it's like, hey man, do you use this product in your I yard? Do. And like, oh, you do? Well, did you get sick from using this weed killer? Well, you might be entitled to financial uh-huh. compensation. Call this number and we'll connect you. Call Fallout, the strong arm. <laughs> Call me. I, I mean, I, I, sorry, that's my other <laughs> Yeah, so I, I did that stuff. It did you have ran. like a moment where like you're like I I need to do the content like creation or like I need to just yeah after there, so there was a, long there was a moment like well there was two moments there was one moment where I came home after like a long day of work and I was just like I felt like empty it was like sad this was before I got into content creation this was like when I realized I was like I need to do something that lets me. Be creative and have fun. You know what I mean? And especially when you get further and further away from college, like your friends, everyone is doing their own thing. People are getting married and they're, you know, like they're moving away. Like you have this mentality. I was like, oh, my friends are going to live in New York forever. (laughs) Like a couple years out of college, they're like, yeah, I'm going to San Fran. It's like, oh man, like I'm sad, but I'm happy for you. But like, yeah, you just come home 
And I'm like, dude, I need to do something that feeds my soul. Because like you just work a white collar job and like you don't have any friends at work and it the work it doesn't mean anything to you. Mm-hmm. So I was just like, I gotta do something. So that was my one moment where I wanted to do something and I was like, I'm gonna make a YouTube channel. And if it, it's fun, great. And if it's not fun, I'll find something else. Yeah. And then that I think kept me happy for a while. I think it's cool you went in with like that mentality rather than like, I think like I'm gonna get like rich quick or something <laughs> like that. Or like this is gonna Strike be the job. Out. Yeah. I'm gonna be rolling in dough. Mm-hmm. Elo and sponsorships. I mean, that, that tempered mentality, exactly, exactly how everyone should approach content creation. I mean, for sure, that's what I always say. It's crazy because kids nowadays are literally like, "Oh man, I want to grow up to be a YouTuber," and it's like, "Don't do that. <laughs> <laughs> try it out. Yeah, yes, try. try it. Sure. Don't go to college expecting <laughs> to be a YouTuber like that. Imagine in five years, there's like a degree. Three. I'm a YouTube. I'm a professional yeah, you, you YouTuber. Joke. I, that you could joke. totally be a thing. I could see that happening. A you come out of college, you like get a YouTube with like a hundred thousand oh. subs. So it's no. like no. kind of an algorithm. Oh, you know? there is. I have no doubt that there will start being like there'll just be like multimedia content yeah, creation just, degrees. Just influence. Just teach you degree. the entire Adobe yeah. suite, like at a very bare minimum yeah. pace. We're gonna be teaching those classes. <laughs> so here's how you post it Instagram. Like, wow. There's going to be an in- influence or something, and it's going to make me sick, but that's good to know. Well, yeah, the uh, I think most people know, but I juggled college and YouTube for a year and a half before I finally said, I think I was like 350,000 subscribers, and I was like, all right, like, I hate college, and I was trying to do it smart, like, I'll just finish my degree but there was no way I was going to keep it up. And then I was like, what am I even going to do? I'm literally doing what I would want to do with a degree pretty much. So I was like, I'm out of here. So that's what that happened. was smart though. Cause like you realized that you had, you know, like a future right there in front of you that you could easily take advantage of. You could seize it. Like you would already worked on building something. You know what I mean? It wasn't just like, I'm going to quit college and live on a dream. <laughs> you no. probably had a really, strong foundation by then and you were like yeah it's like oh and i'm sure christian's parents like made him go through like the made every t and i dotted oh, across yeah. everything before like he made that choice yeah they were they were at first not not too happy about it but now they're all right with it i'm not happy with my son <laughs> making making fat bank on youtube like well, they didn't understand. My mom was the more understandable. She was just like, oh, whatever makes you happy. But my no. dad was like, Good where's, mom. The, just where's, the, where's mom. the, show me the paycheck. I showed him the paycheck. He goes, okay, <laughs> fair enough. Yeah, you're good. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, no, I, I made sure that um, I'd already saved up some money too. So that even if it did go south, I'd be able to like maintain myself for a little while. And thankfully it didn't go south. It you want to hear something funny? Have... Yeah, go, go for it. Yeah, when I was in like when I was way younger, you know, school and school and fallout, uh, like pretty much at the end of high school. You guys have a relationship with your parents. This is getting so real, by the way, so deep. I'm, so I'm down with that. When I, when I was in like oh, late high school, I did not get along with my old man. My dad and I were like always button heads. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. And uh, I was bad in school. I was just dumb. Like, I didn't want to pay attention or learn. I got like bad grades. My dad would always come down on me. But uh, and, and, you know, rightfully so. But uh, later, doesn't make you doesn't make you dumb though. School is a different fair, kind of learning. Fair. It's not a good. I measure. should rephrase that. It wasn't none of the things that were being taught appealed to me. Like it didn't you, connect with me, and I was like, I don't want to learn about. We're, we're the same person right now. <laughs> you feeling me? Where? Yeah, I, I I had to say I literally talked about his last podcast. I'm pretty sure where like all the school stuff was easy, and like I would test and I would test fine. Mm-hmm. It's just like when I actually had to do work, I was like, I, this is, I don't want to. Yeah. Do I, I, was so just I just never out. turned in homework. <laughs> Pretty much. Uh, I got better when I was in college. Cause when you're in college, you can study things that you actually care about. Exactly. But, yeah. But like, but so early on, you can. parents were not a fan of me playing video games at all. The first console I ever bought was with my own money, which I saved up from like, mowing lawns and stuff and like shoveling walkways it was like i bought the n64 in 97 banger money that was my first one i bought too the best one that was a good one but uh and my parents were like you spent too much time gaming (laughs) 
But uh, but now jokes like, on I, you. Jokes get me now. But, but they're actually supportive now, especially my dad, which is funny because he he oh. was the one who came down to me the most. But like when I call him now to like catch up. He's like, so how many subscribers do you have? <laughs> Dude, you, you're really like explaining like my dad. Like <laughs> when I was in high school, so like I was like a really big like soccer athlete. Like I was supposed to be like going to colleges and doing all that kind of stuff. And uh, I was, I, I just like playing video games. And my dad, like when I would like watch YouTube videos, I'd watch like Minecraft. Like I watch Yogg's cast and stuff like that. And my dad would be like, you need to watch like soccer highlight videos. And I was like, Ugh. <laughs> like, eh. that sounds like the worst thing. Like, Last thing I want to do, Dad, I've been playing soccer all day. The last thing I want to do now is, like, watch soccer. So, like, I eventually, like, ended up quitting because of him. Oh, wow. And, oh. Uh, yeah, so, like, and then I just, like, so just played video games and, like, went to college. And then the whole thing with, like, Christian kind of started happening. And then I was, like, I'm going to just start Twitch streaming. Like, that just sounds fun. Like, it's not YouTube. Like, I don't want to edit and all that kind of stuff. And I feel like talking to chat and all that stuff is like more fun and engaging. And I feel like I could do that more often. Someone, and then when I told, told my dad that he said that like I was getting catfished, he didn't believe like it was like a real thing. <laughs> like he thought it was just like, some old man <laughs> trying to, yeah, it was really oh, funny. He, he was like, funny. I don't believe like this at all. Yeah. <laughs> he what thinks you you're thinking? getting scammed yeah, by it's, a, it's, a prince overseas or something it's, like that. It's so crazy to me because your dad had to have seen how successful fruit was getting. And he still was like, I don't believe it. I, yeah, believe it. Just, I like try it. He just Alternative like, did, facts. But, like, but now fallout said, it's like, now my dad is like the first one to ask me how many, how, how many people did you get? Like, that's what he said. <laughs> so I'll be like, how I was streaming. He'll be like, Oh, how many people did you get? I'm like, I, I, I don't, I don't know. I don't get goes, people, dad. I yeah. Just, and then, just watch me. <laughs> and then I'll, I'll just throw a number. I'll go, ah, 60. And he goes, is that good? I'm like, yeah, it's, pretty, it's not bad. And he goes, Oh, that's great, Rob. I'm so, that's, that's awesome. Oh, that's and nice. Then, and then he'll go, how's uh, the Dr. Fruit? How's Dr. Fruit? Dr. He, calls, <laughs> he calls, he calls him Dr. Fruit. I'm like, dad, his name is Mr fruit like imagine I'm like, that's my boss. <laughs> yeah i was like he doesn't have a phd like <laughs> relax wouldn't do me much good but my dad um, hated gaming though like when i was like a teenager and stuff so he, just yeah, thought, I mean, he just saw it as a distraction especially like took away from soccer i mean my parents were the same way um well the thing too is like for me um I couldn't see like they were really strict. So like I couldn't see PG thirteen movie until I was thirteen, wow. and I couldn't see an R movie until I was seventeen. Um, and then at that point, when I was able to drive, it made it easier to like go do my own stuff. Um, but like games, you broke could, rules? couldn't play <laughs> T games until I was like thirteen. Like same thing, and they wouldn't get me a mature game unless I was able to buy it. So it had to be seventeen. So. I just like played Pokemon pretty much. I'd played Pokemon and like I had some on and off games here and there. And I played a lot, but like nothing too serious. And then it was Halo 3 where I played in my friend's basement during the summer. And so like a year later, I made this whole essay uh, for my mom explaining why I should get Halo. <laughs> and I'm like MLA formatted everything. A couple pages. And going through the reasoning and the big thing too is she's like, it's violence, like you're killing people. So my big selling point was, no, you're killing aliens, you're killing Covenant. And I included stuff and I wasn't wrong, I just excluded <laughs> PvP. Because in the campaign, you're not killing other people. Yeah, you're, and your mom's not going to know about like a multiplayer. No, like so like, <laughs> she's like, I don't believe you. So I showed her, I showed her some video and I remember it's like some campaign mission, they're killing like a brute. She's like, well, it kind of looks like a person, but like, I see, I see what you're saying. And it has eyes. But she's like, there's like blood and stuff. I was like, it's alien blood. And so, you're just over there for like, my oh. birthday. Yeah, um, they got it for me, even though I had to buy the 360 yeah. myself. I'd already like saved up. Ooh. And they got it for me, and it was like, did you cry? Bless up. I probably, I don't remember, but I imagine I would have. <laughs> the whole day was just so glorious. But I just recently heard my dad tell me a couple days ago, apparently they were having a discussion about it, um, about whether or not to get it for me. And my dad was like, no, he's not getting it. My mom's like, but like, he really wants it. And like, he like explained and it, like, it's not violent or anything. And so evidently my mom won the argument. Thank goodness. And I told my dad, like, imagine you didn't let me get Halo. I wouldn't be here. That's like, great. What the heck? Yeah, it's true. Very true. 
all and all parents um, sound literally the same. I mean, yeah. After I would grind it, but like they'd put timers on, or like if you want to play an hour inside, you have to be outside for X amount of hours. Or did your parents use parental controls on the Xbox? Like, no, they did didn't they... know how. But oh, like, okay. if I was grounded, they would. <laughs> They would just take the discs, hide them, take the controllers, hide them, oh, like no. do everything. See, nowadays it's like, good, take the discs. <laughs> Get a good one, man. <laughs> Little do they know. I already have the thousand gigabytes of Modern Warfare installed. So that was, uh, that was how I grew up. And then um, mainly changed later in high school when my parents would go to bed sooner. So then I'd just grind Call of Duty into the late, late hours. And that was where my love for gaming, or at least shooters, came from. And I remember playing Halo 3, and I was only like, literally like five months into owning an Xbox. I was just destroying kids. It's like, I've never played an FPS before. These guys suck. And (laughs) I was getting up there in the MLG ranks, and my brother's like, yo, my friend's older brother um, is like a semi-pro or something. And he said he'd love to 1v1 you. And I was like, pfft. Bro, let me add him. Like, I'll show him what's up. I'm, I'm climbing up my ranks. This, oh my is, not, this is the start of my movie. <laughs> yeah, I was like, yeah, I can take him. I'm the 1v1, protagonist. 1v1 midship, BRs only. Classic. Uh, he won 25 to 3. Ooh. Uh, it was, Ooh. I have never been so humbled before. That I was is like, BM too to go to 25. Yeah, I was like, oh. That is BM. <laughs> like, he doesn't miss a four shot nade placement's insane. He knows spawns. I'm like, I, oh, I, dude. I had an existential crisis after the match. I was like, everyone had to feel that. Like yeah, I was like, I'm going to, I'm just going to sell the Xbox, man. Like, I'm never going to play uh, video games again. I'll tell you a quick one in that same vein. So I love Smash Bros. Love Smash Bros. I've been oh, playing God. ever since N64. <laughs> oh. Love it, dude. Uh, my favorite was Melee for the GameCube. I just played so much Melee. Um, my my schedule in college was so bad, dude. Like senior year, I had one class that I cared about, which is like my senior uh, film class. So I would do as much work as I could. And then I would go to the student center, had a, a game room, like underneath, like the bottom floor student center, huge, huge game room, insane. And uh, we, I would go there at like four in the afternoon and I would play smash melee until like midnight when it closed and then i'd go back to my dorm and i'd play halo online until like 5 a.m <laughs> and, and i'd wake up at like noon <laughs> and go to class until four hey, and then repeat juggling different genre games though hey more power yeah. to you uh, but, uh, melee was my first like humbling too and i yeah when, speaking of melee i thought yeah. it was hot shit and then i would always tell my parents uh like oh i'm going like this extracurricular activity after school like you're gonna have to pick me up like around like six <laughs> that, it was it, it was the nice smash dude. club <laughs> i remember going to my first smash club at my school and i just got annihilated and i think that's the first time i've ever like been like i mean not the first it, no, no, that was the first time i've ever been like i have to be the fucking best at this video game because people will <laughs> never embarrass me like that ever again i will never let that happen so literally my next two two years was straight melee grind and a oh, man did you uh, ever all, all of that skill is the only reason that i get carried and smash now did you ever <laughs> cement your revenge oh absolutely i was super oh, well it was more so that it wasn't that deep for them because everyone there was older than me yeah they're like, like gg's and you're over yeah, there like, 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 like yeah gg's man oh, yeah. like do you ever oh, become yeah, the number one hero Oak like who was like really the best player one. in that class uh i don't i i don't I don't think so. I, I got really good to where I was like as good as all the Do you older remember kids. who the best was? Yeah, this uh he was a stupid fucking peach player and <laughs> I don't even remember his name, but I hated him. Cause I would play Pikachu because I love Pokemon. Name was probably like and Pikachu's not a good character wow. in Melee, so No, not really. It was rough. It was a r- it was a rough couple of years, but I managed to pull it out and uh now I'm a Wi Fi warrior, so it turned out pretty good. Good man. Everyone yes. Else. My first tournament, I got bopped. Like I played with, like the fir- the year it came out, I played all that year and all summer with my friend because like you're playing with your with your buddies in the basement. Yeah. And when you're Casual. the king, yeah, when you're like the the couch king, yeah, you know what I mean. Like, you're oh, whooping on everyone, and then people are like, "Oh, there's like a tournament. You should go to." It was literally an MLG. It's we a trap. went to MLG. Yeah, we went to MLG Philly. 
I literally remember we went to MLG Philly and we registered for doubles. <laughs> we got ruined. Annihilated for we these got dudes. destroyed. I feel like doubles games, would be even more out. brutal than solos because yeah. like people yeah. would have like combos. synergies, strats, combos. Yeah, too, to where it's oh just God. like so humbling. I just like <laughs> crawled out with my tail between my legs. <laughs> it's like, <laughs> damn. It was yeah, still no. fun though. I only ever played with my neighborhood kids. Um, never got to go to any tourneys or anything. So I never really thought I was that good. And then it wasn't until pretty much Ultimate, because I'd never been... I had a Wii back in the day with Brawl, but I didn't, I, I didn't have internet. Um, so I never got to play online, so I never knew, right? And I play pretty much like Ultimate go online. I'm like, ah, I see. I'm garbage. <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> in every fighting game I've ever played, there's like... There's a level, and like I just can never get there. Like in terms of like getting the combos down, and like and, and never in any fight. Like I've played Dead or Alive. Yeah. I've played everything. It's it, and it's so hard to get that if you didn't grow up grinding that. Yeah, well, guess that's, what? That's All the, the fighting old, like, games. Everyone else is better at me than shooters, but like fighting games, I literally grew up being a stupid combo greed fiend. Like, <laughs> <laughs> problem is all the fighting games were M. So I never had fighting games. Oh, yeah. I can never play it. I remember once I played like Tekken at some friend's house on like PS1. We were like, oh. Uh, well, I was just like, I shouldn't be playing this. He's like, dude, it's fine. And I played some <laughs> Jaguar dude or whatever and um, just got destroyed. And I was like, this sucks. And I never played it again. And that was pretty much it. Is that the first like M game that you played? Maybe. I mean, I remember I was such a goody good two shoes too. I remember... um. I was like seven or eight and I went over to a friend's house for like a sleepover and they're like, uh, like, what do you guys want to watch? It's just like me and my friend and their mom. And he's like, can we watch E.T.? And I'm like, isn't that PG-13? And they're like, yeah, but like, we won't tell, like, like we won't tell your parents. And I was like, but I can't. And they're like, it'll be fine. So we end up watching it. And my mom picks me up the next morning. And the first thing I go is, we watched a PG-13 movie. I'm so sorry, mom. <laughs> oh, my God. <laughs> and it's you E.T. Knock. It's knock, bro. Yeah. But I was like, oh, I'm so, I was like, I can't. Oh. I just mentioned that existential crisis as like a little kid. Just like, like I me got, swelling. <laughs> but I, it's, it's PG-13. So how like, was that? I saw E.T. Like, like, <laughs> yeah, like, I think of my mom just knows, like, she's going to show she up mad? any second. Were you allowed to go back there? No. I think so. I I mean, she didn't really care that much, and I think it was more just that like I was I honest about e. it. Like, but yeah, it was E.T. Like, too, because like the ratings back in like Terminator the eighties, the yeah. ratings back in the eighties were different. Like E.T. would be like PG now. Um, oh yeah, hundred percent. Yeah, I think it's PG thirteen because he says penis breath. Like that's literally the only reason why. <laughs> Bro, now we're a PG thirteen <laughs> podcast. Dude. Great, but you know what else is great? This, this ad? ad read. This ad read. Yo, fellas, you guys looking to last a little longer? Maybe take it a few extra rounds? Want to be confident every time you go in the sack? Get BlueChew.com. BlueChew.com has the first ever chewable that brings your performance in the bedroom to another level. Check this out. They got the same ingredients that are in Viagra and Cialis, so you know that they work. Since they're chewable, they can work faster. You can take them anytime, day or night even on a full stomach. And this stuff is cheaper than those other two, so this is a no-brainer. Basically, if you like sex, you'll like BlueChew.com. Plus, you don't need to go to the doctor's office or spend time waiting in the pharmacy line. BlueChew's online physician consultant is free. Once approved, your online order ships straight to your door in a discreet packaging. Here's a great deal for all you listeners out there. Visit BlueChew.com and get your first order free when you use promo code GG. Just pay $5 in shipping. Again, that's B L U E CHU dot com promo code G G. Say it with me, guys. Chew it and do it. That's right. And welcome back to this episode of GG Over Easy. Now, we got a lot to get to, ladies and gents. Although there's only Ooh. gents here, but there might be some ladies listening. Hey, hi, how are you? Thanks for being like the 3% of my audience. Appreciate that. You know, help reduce the sausage fest just a little bit. I mean, I'm all for sausages, but like, it's a little too much. You know what I'm saying? You can consider us a sausage link right now, if you're being literal. It's true. I like a spicy sausage. 
Nice. There was, what was that? Oh, the Google feud video we did where Danielle was in it. Mm -hmm. A couple of comments were like, thank God there's a girl, dude. It's been such a sausage fest. I was like, what do you want me? Like, what are we, we going to get? A, a token girl? Like, yeah. hey, we just need a girl. Like, it's just too much testosterone. It's so, it's so impossible to get that because one, to get a girl to record something on a game and two... I also can't like talk to girls, many, so... Yeah, like how many... We don't really... There's not a whole lot of girl, unfortunately. I mean, with the because of how the industry is, it's, You're it's really a lot trying harder to, skate to find... Well, I'm just... I, okay, yeah, I'm just straight up saying up. It is rough for women in, in content creation, so it is very hard to find other... It's very hard to find women to actually do stuff with with you because, well, I mean, there's not that many because, well, it's really... People are people are mean on the internet to women. I mean, it's just how it is. It's kind of rough. H hats off, man. The the female content creators and streamers out there, strong men. Couldn't They're really strong. They Mad do. respect. Super respect. Because you just go in and there's a ton of great ones in the Destiny community. Like, you know, so Snaps many. So many great ones. Uh they're just fantastic people. But like you just go in and it's like, oh man. The, the, couldn't do the it. cowards, the, the would, keyboard cowards, I keyboard would be warriors. Able to deal with it, they deal with it great. So you know, more power to them. Just, I go in there and I just realize the true stupidity of humanity. I was like, mm. people actually do this. Bizarre. But anyway, we've got a lot of stuff to get to. It's been a busy week, or at least gaming. Is there anything Very outside of gaming week. that's like aside uh, just from the world being on fire? Yeah. I mean, aside from like you know some political stuff. But I don't think. I mean, the power. I mean, um, let's 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 talk to the let's talk about the big one. The PS5 reveal was. I don't know. Pretty tight. Everyone it watched it. I'm assuming. All right. I guess everyone did watch it in here. I, so, I watched it. Yeah, I did. So the future of gaming event. Uh, the design. One, immediately, way better than what I thought it was going to be. I probably like set my expectations really low because Xbox was like, hey guys, we're going to reveal Here's Xbox a fridge. One. Because it's Xbox. He's like, also, it's a fridge and we're just going to do it like nonchalantly. And oh, no gameplay. Uh, it was a very stark contrast. They, they showed so many games. They showed the new controller, which I really like the controller. I just don't know why it's in white. Uh, although I guess seeing the, the console... I just hate controllers yeah. now, dude. Like, I just, I don't care, like, what kind of controller it is. When I hold a controller in my hand now, it just feels weird. Like, mm -hmm. I just, I just, it always can't feels do like it home. Anymore. You've Doesn't got matter so much how muscle long. memory now, though, from mouse and keyboard you've built I'm over the so years. I'm so bad. I'm so bad on console now. Maybe you I, always have I, been. Nope. I was really <laughs> good. I was goaded. <laughs> I was I had 450s last time I checked. <laughs> yeah, like, hey, put some respect <laughs> on my name. Well, now, for some reason, I mean, I'm not as good as I was either, but the feel of the controller still feels right. And there are some games too where I like some like indie games or PC games or like platform games where I prefer, I actually think it's better to just, because like Dark Souls is one of those. It's Sekiro, yeah, for mm -hmm. me. I haven't played the Dark Souls aside from Bloodborne a little bit. Next but like, here. you know, it's like, you know, you can't quite do that with a keyboard mouse. You know, sit back, relax. Yeah. And just kind of, you know, zone out. So it's nice to do every now and then. But as far as like the thing for me was the PS5, though, like obviously for me, like specs and stuff, it's like I I have a PC, so I don't I don't really care too much. Um, yeah. It's the game. Especially too. It's, it's all the games that come out on it. Because if I wanted specs, I mean, I literally have really yes 25 far too expensive <laughs> PC, pc on my thing and if it was about specs that i mean i there is i would never buy a console ever no but some dope exclusives and stuff and there were yeah tons of lot. games showed so many yeah a lot of they ones showed... uh, i didn't even know about either like didn't even because like godfall for instance we saw but like we kind of knew about that um I wasn't impressed with Godfall. It looked kind of funky. Yeah, kind of. It really looked excited nah. when they announced it, and when I saw the gameplay, it just looked like a really pretty mobile game. Yeah, yeah, it looked yeah, just like clunky, a little choppy and like blocky. I was like, yeah, yeah, yeah was like this isn't like catching my fancy. Unless they're listening right now and they want to send me free stuff, I was, then it looks yeah, great. Like just you know, hit me up. I mean, I hope. Yes. I, it's one of those games. I it's hope so is good. stupid. 
I hope it's good because it's really pretty, but it just reminds me of a mobile game. Like I can't get it out of my head. Yeah. Um, it's you know what does so, not look like a mobile so, game? So stupid. Yeah, what's that? Is you that... thought it looked sweet? Yeah. Oh, did you like it? But whatever. Oh, you liked it. I'm, I'm in the minority here, so. I've I mean, been hey, <laughs> that's what this podcast is for. I don't so, know if you thought it looked cool. Yeah, if you thought it looked cool, then I mean, I'm down. I mean, there's a lot of games where they don't look technically incredible, but they end up being dope. So I hope the game's yeah. good because, I mean, it's a very, the art style of the game alone is super, super tight. As long as it's got some cool loot swords and stuff and some cool outfits too. I'm pretty simple to please. As long as it's satisfying combat. Give me some parries. Give me a good parry in a melee game. That's all I need. Sold. Like Sekiro's parry. Oh! oh. So good. So, sorry. Anyway, continue, please. I mean, yeah, God of all the tight. Uh, they showed a couple other really, really, I mean, incredible titles. Horizon uh, Zero Dawn 2. Horizon Sorry. Zero Dawn 2. They didn't show any gameplay, but I don't need to see any gameplay because Guerrilla Games is always like <sighs> literally just a technical demo of masterclass design. Like the Killzone games, I know a lot of people don't remember them, but those, it is, inc- if you look back at Killzone games, it is a wonder how they managed to put that out on PS4 launch. So, I mean, we're going to see some crazy shit from Guerrilla Games with the launch PS5. They always know how to do. They always know how to make like un- unreal high quality gameplay, and then Horizon was such a good game too. Like that's that was one of my favorite games is last gen. He's like I would put probably God of War than Horizon for me. Yeah. Oh, really? I would I would put it top three for sure. God of War was just <sighs> can't. Dude, I've got like I didn't beat either. I've got like a really long list of games that I really want to play when I get less busy. <laughs> Well, that's uh, for me. The reason I liked Horizon Zero Dawn is because, like you, like I never find time to play games. I'm not recording, yeah, but right. Horizon Zero Dawn, I made a point to finish and beat, like in my free time, which I'd never do. Oh wow! Because that's how much you. I liked it. Yeah. 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 Uh, my fiance played that game. And said it was awesome. Like every person I've ever talked to is like, "Yeah, dude, Horizon. So, you gotta, t- you gotta pick it up, bro. You gotta pick it up." It's it's it comes off as so silly when you watch it. It's like, oh, futuristic apocalypse robots. It's just a, it's just a weird like game, little art direction porn, and it is. But then you play the game, and it's like, <laughs> oh also, man, they so they make the world make sense, dude, in like the best ways possible. Like, is the it. story good? Like, does it yeah. play yeah. well? So, yeah. It starts off a little slow. Uh, okay. Like, well, not starts off. It starts off like crazy, and the mid gets a little slow story wise, but like it brings you back in by the end, and it's like, wow. It was. How, the f- yeah, how did they manage cool to make this make sense? It's the only story game where I have purposefully gone out to find the yes. extras, like the little audio files. Normally, I don't care. Oh. I was literally trying to find. I was like, the war. I need the war. Give me the yeah. like. Give me the snippets. I was all. It, see, it. it seems so <laughs> silly, but they make they make apocalyptic space dinosaur robots like <laughs> such an interesting topic of like how do we get here and like and then every. Everything getting there is like, wow, this actually makes sense. Like, oh my God. In the new trailer too, you see all the new ones we're going to get to. Also, the big elephants. Like I never, okay. So like I never played, but I saw all the big robot creatures, which look look really cool. I thought that this was on like a far away planet. And then when they were showing the trailer, I was like, is that the Golden Gate Bridge? Like, is this this here, bro? Like, well, that's why it's so interesting. When it came out, Fru was like having a a fangasm because it's in Colorado in the game. It's based in Colorado, so there's like, there's like red. You can go to the Red Rocks Amphitheater. Yeah, I mean, plus like a location that's not a big, but you can like go to the Red Rocks Amphitheater. There is the um, Air Force Base in Colorado Springs. You can find Mm -hmm. all this kind of stuff, and I was like, because I remember I was like walking, and I was like, this looks like Red Rocks. And then yeah. you can like go and it shows you like a little snippet. Like um, if you go up to it uh, and like interact, it'll show you a picture, like a small glimpse of what it actually looked like previously um, before the collapse, whatever. And so a lot of the game is figuring out what happened to humanity and how this all happened, it's which is why so it's so interesting. Man. Yeah, that does sound kind of cool. I would suggest it. The first time you the fight a Thunderjaw 2. Looks- 
Oh, I'll never forget that. Spider-Man is another game on my list of like, dude, I got to find time to play it because it looks really good. Looks and now there's a new one coming out where you can play as Miles, who I love Miles. Awesome. I knew I knew we were going to have Miles Morales next, but like when it showed up, I was like, that soon. Oh. Yeah. Oh. I'm so yeah. excited, man. The new Resident Evil looks super sick, too. I like I like super scary video. I hate scary movies, but I love scary games, dude. And that like that Resident Evil game looks sick. Miss me with that. I didn't even watch the trailer. I was like, I know I'm not going to want to play that. So. Oh, it looks so cool. <laughs> I just know. I know my limits. There was one that really caught me by surprise. Well, first off, 2K21. Deathloop. Oh, yeah. I was like, yes. <laughs> um, Deathloop um, was one. Yeah. And I was watching it, and I was like, man, a lot of this seems like Dishonored. And then it shows Arcane Studios. I go, ah, that would be why, because they made Dishonored. Um, but the mechanics and I always like um any kind of like time mind bending stuff or anything like that. So like a time loop that sounds really interesting, and then slowly piecing together a story. Um, plus like the art direction, the whole mood, and then again coming from Dishonored folks, um, who I love, um, I'm really excited about that one. There was a lot of hate on the because I watched the trail on YouTube. A lot of people were saying it was dumb or something. I was like. They there were saying that like trailer? every game that they were yeah. showing it was like L L L. No matter what, <laughs> I mean, that's, <laughs> I was <laughs> super impressed. Yeah, they're always going to say L L L L to every game. Yeah, but was well, Deathloop the one where it was like two like killers who are locked in like yeah. an endless loop? That sounded funny to me because I'm picturing like Groundhog Day with Bill Murray, except yeah. with people trying to like <laughs> kill each other. I was Although, like, yeah, I'm I'm in. They also alluded at least from what I could tell at the end, that someone else can play as the person trying to stop the main character. Yeah, But they didn't confirm that. Yeah. But I mean, like, the way it it showed them going into the perspective and taking control, that'd be interesting. I wonder if it's, like, something you can turn on or off, kind of like what they did with, like, Watch Dogs, except on a bigger and more, like, um, meaningful scale. Um, But there was Deathloop. And, like, that one... Like, if you're looking for, like, a technical game or something, or even on the outset, like, it might not look that impressive, but I know it's going to play really well, and the yeah. story should be interesting. Um, the one that really surprised me was, I think it's said, or pronounced, Kena? Kena? That game really surprised me. That, like, that reminded oh. me of, like, the type of game, as a it kid, like those the, adventure games you always wanted. The, oh. It looked like the Bad Juju game. What was that? What yeah, was it that looked game? like Studio Ghibli and Disney oh. made like an adventure yeah. game. Is that the one yeah. with the girl with the staff? That, and yeah. The yeah. 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 Black thingies chasing mm-hmm. around? That was kind of interesting. It looked, it looked super interesting to me. It looked fun, but also like kind of peaceful. Nothing too intense. Um, the gameplay looked like combat. I saw a parry, so I was like, I'm in. Give me that. Give That's me that. all I need. Parries, uh, we in. Yeah, I, seriously. I'm Speaking of parries, dude, Demon Souls. Uh, that's literally remaster, the re- well, not even a remaster. I'm gonna be playing that one. Remake. That is gonna be sick. Like, cause I've heard Demon Souls is like the best of like the Dark Souls and like everything, like and like the most hardcore and the most difficult. Oh, I can't wait. So I am an uncultured swine. Did that come before Dark Souls? Yes. Yeah. That was the first Souls game. Yes. Oh. I'm right there with you. I was watching live on Twitch and I was like, what is Demon Souls? Because I know <laughs> it's like, like remastered. You swine! You fool! <laughs> yeah, it still uh, goes Demon yeah. Souls, then Dark Souls, Dark Souls 2, Dark Souls 3. And Bloodborne's in so there. This somewhere. is a, a remake of like the first Dark Souls. I believe so, yes. But That's kind of cool. It def- well, I mean, remaster, like. I was watching it. I was like, this is a remake? This kind of looks was, insane. It just looks like a whole new game. I was, like, I was no watching one... uh, Lyric after the conference, and that's one of the first things he did is he was like, I, I, I want to go watch the original uh, trailer for Demon's Souls because the, cause the, the remake trailer is basically like a kind of frame to the frame same kind trailer. Of? Yeah. Not frame to frame, but it was same idea, right? Like they had the that's opening tight. shot was the same. Some of the bosses were the same. Like some of the iconic shots were the same. Um, and it's so crazy, like how far we've come from back then. Because I, I legit, he was, I legit thought I was watching like a VHS tape of a game reveal, <laughs> like that. It was so old. And then you watch the new one, and lyric was like, "Bro, it's like you put your glasses on." Bro, and think about <laughs> it. Like that game's only 
I think Demon Souls is only 11 years old too. So 2009. Yeah. So it's like not even that old. But I mean, back then, like the standard was like 720p. Yeah. It's crazy how fast technology changes. Think about it, think about in 11 years, we're gonna be looking back like, dude, Demon Souls remastered. Did that garbage, bro? Like, <laughs> I think YouTube just took away like the little HD part on the 720 quality option on uh, YouTube. Nah, so, it's a lie. No. F's in the chat. I. I remember for so long too. I mean, for a good like the first year and a half, I was doing YouTube. I was still only 720 because that's all I had was this old Elgato. Because I don't know what you started on Fallout. I guess you you didn't start content creation until later. But I originally started back like 2010, and back then I had the Hapog HD PBR, and that was Whoa. with the good old RGB cables or whatever. And that thing would only record in 480, I think, or at least it's all I could manage. So I never really realized. I looked back and I was like, "God, the quality of those videos suck." Like, <laughs> and it has half a million views. I was like, "What am I doing wrong now, man?" <laughs> <It's> like, <laughs> uh, but um, Ratchet yeah, no, and Clank that, was on there too. Ratchet I, I was surprised by that. I did not expect another. Ratchet I wanted and Jack and Daxter, but what? I was waiting Ratchet. for Sly Cooper. Guess I'll keep waiting. See, I see. I feel like there's three people. There's you got you got Ratchet and Clank, and then you got your Sly Coopers, and then you got your Jack and Daxter. Yeah, I just have uh, us to be two over here. Like, hello. <laughs> I I haven't played the Ratchet and Clanks, but I'll probably give it. A I go. haven't either. They're, they're they're classic. That's like, I mean, I mean, we still get Sony games like that. Um, but I mean, uh, that's like the first wave of them. Was the platformer super pretty platformers? Was that a uh, Project Athena? Was that the one that kind of looked like a uh, like a giant world explorer kind of galaxy looking thing? You know what I'm talking about? It was like a little ship flying. No, and it looked like different. She was like a sorceress. She was like which is the one I'm thinking of then? The one where it's like a little sh like a spaceship flying around. That and it looked oh, like um it's coming outer it's coming Oddworld. like twenty either holiday twenty twenty or something. I know what you're jet? talking about. I think it's jet, yes. Is that the Pretty one? I'm sure. oh, yeah. yeah. That one looked cool. I think that looked interesting. If they can do it, you know. Or it's, yeah, it's something like you gotta like save or build civilization or like it's something know, like looks... five hundred years in the future, like yeah. you go through a whole thing. And, Pragmata too. That looked uh, it looked like a, it looked like a Kojima game. I don't know if I, it is. At first, I was like, "This, this just shouts Kojima or something." And then, like the little girl, and I'm like, "This is just Kojima, dude." <laughs> oh, I was <yeah>. like, <laughs> I, I knew it wasn't Kojima because, like, when you see a Kojima title, like this is Kojima. Like, oh, yeah, it would have been Kojima. Kojima. Yeah. Kojima. Yeah. <laughs> By the way, Hideo Kojima. Okay, here's the trailer. Kojima. Yeah. I, I mean, that looked interesting, but it just looked like, I mean, more Death Stranding in space, but like less acid. We'll have to see what, we don't know what gameplay even is. We don't know if it's like an adventure yeah, game, yeah. Um, if there's even combat, like if it's more Death Stranding-ish, who really knows? Um, But that looked really cool just like for the story alone, see where they go, which is also why um, yeah. Returnal looked really cool. Um, That's the one where she keeps crashing. It's another time loop, uh, coincidentally. But she's like an astronaut. She crashes into this place, I guess. These things come, take her, kill her. And it's like over and over again, she's reliving it. Um, and then you're trying to like break it. But then at the very end, it shows gameplay and it looks like a really cool like third person shooter. Um, so that one looks interesting. Were there any that stuck out to you, Fallout? <laughs> there was one game. Uh, I feel like the, the games are a mixture of like, oh yeah, that's like, that's real. I like that. It's like I could see myself playing that, could wrap my head around it. And then there's other games where I'm just like watching a trailer. I'm like, is the cat the main character? It's like, can you guys uh, play uh, the cat? Yeah, that was, and that then, was, like, that was what I was going to talk about. Uh, <laughs> stray. <laughs> yeah, Stray. I, I don't know what that's about, but I mean, sure, you got, my, you got my attention. <laughs> yeah, that one got my attention just because it looked, I was like, oh, you're playing Stray Cat. Yeah, you're just sure. a cat? You're just it's, a cat in like a robot really? world. Like everyone else is like robots, right. and it's funny they show like a robot in like a hair salon, but instead he's like getting like uh, his bolts like tightened or something. It's just and then there's just this cat like roaming around, and then I guess mm. we'll figure out. It's pretty abstract, but um, the idea alone got me 
Very got me interested. Yeah. Little Devil Inside. Um, looks really cool. Looked like which one was that? It had a pretty interesting art style. So it was like this little guy, and he was on so many different adventures. But then it would cut to like an old man, um, in like normal society, like sleeping or pooping. And so I don't know what it is, but it might be like his inner child or creativity and like so he's imagining himself on these adventures or something kind of seemed what it was like but it looks like all the the gameplay like it stretches so many different things it just looks really cool and really inventive and i guess it's been worked on for like seven years um oh wow so i'm interested in that one um I mean, I, mean, I guess we should mention Gran ones. Turismo, like, but I'm not really big into racing games. Like, it looks I, pretty. I, I if you're like into those Grand games, Turismo, but I'm kind of out of it. Like, Forza has been so good for so long. Yeah, I've never been in the racing games, except for Need for Speed Underground Two. Uh, Need for Speed Hot Pursuit Two, you mean? Well, no, no. those are no, different I, ones. I, I, <laughs> but I, I did also like Hot Pursuit. That's true. Just That's those corny one. Need for Speed. PS2 games. Mm-hmm. I was all about those. Yeah, I love those. But that was really. But I do hit. like the burnout ones. Uh, uh, the ones where you like you make a giant uh car accident and you try and make like the biggest destruction thing. Oh, that was. <laughs> I never. I never had those. Good. Oh, burnout was awesome. It was rated PG-13, so maybe. <laughs> they revealed all that though, but they're st- they still haven't re- released. I believe a price and a date. And here is why Sony marketing is so much better than Xboxes. You basically have two consoles that are almost identical, but the difference is what's Xbox going to do? Xbox is going to reveal their pricing, and then Sony's going to be like, "Oh, nice!" And then they're going to reveal their pricing fifty dollars cheaper. Yeah, ours is conveniently yeah. right under yours. Yeah, exactly. they're going to pull the old uh, Bob Barker price yeah. and right, <laughs> shave off a dollar. Sony marketing is that's the only reason. The consoles are almost identical, but Sony knows how to market the shit out of their consoles. Are you guys gonna get a? Uh, are you guys gonna get a um, disc one or just a digital version? Digital. Um, I'm probably gonna get a digital one. I, I can't get the digital. Yeah, I, I can't because... tell you the last time I bought a disc and put no. it into my system. <laughs> Doesn't happen. Same. I mean. Yeah. I've been playing PC for so long, like I'm just used to digital, and I'm I'm just cool with it now. It's so funny because that's the reason why Xbox got so, got so much flack. Like, yeah, we we really want to go like a, into the digital world, and then Sony was like, <laughs> "What did you say? <laughs> oh, well, disc, bitch!" And it was like, think- yeah, Sony, yeah." And now, fi- like, what? Seven years later, it's like, yeah, I mean, digital, yeah, yeah I'm chill with it. <laughs> you yeah, got to cool. think the digital one's going to be cheaper, right? Then yeah, the one that you take it it's like smaller. Yeah, if it's not, then that's gonna be like, bruh. Point. <laughs> I mean, that's just some hardware and stuff you don't have to include. So I would imagine. But, uh, you know what I hate though is like I'm gonna get this PS5 and I'm gonna pre-order it, and then as soon as I get it, the cool console themed edition ones are gonna come out, and it's gonna <laughs> look sick with this exactly. model. Exactly. Because I think this model is dope. I don't. I don't. I think I it's really sweet. like the model. Yeah, I, I love it. Sick. Yeah, I saw a lot of people hating on it. I like it. Yeah, it, I think it's sleek. It's clean. so much nicer than the... Because, I mean, I, look, I mean, there's a lot of competition with PC now, okay? And if I'm going to get, like, a really nice console, I don't want it to be a brick. It's got to it's gotta say something. It's got to have, fridge. like, a fashion-forward, you know, like, statement. Like, this is the PS5. But also, like, please look pretty on my desk. <laughs> the ironic thing is, like, I always like, man, that looks cool. But realistically, it's always been like in the middle of an <laughs> entertainment system or behind like cupboard or right now it's in my closet. On the like floor. Like, yeah, like yeah. I'm, I'm never going to look at it. And most people who complain about it, it, it won't matter one way or the other. Um, the only thing I saw were people being like, that's only cool if I can put it sideways. And just like the older ones, you can. Remember the Xbox 360? If you put it sideways with a disc in it, it would literally make the perfect oh. circle around. Yeah. Like it would get mad. <laughs> uh, yeah. it ran, and then like now it's ruined. It would make a bad noise. And you'd be like, oh crap. Uh-huh. Oh no. Yep. And it had a perfect just donut oh, ring around God. it. 
Terrible. I was always wondering, it's like, what's destroying my disc? And that's when I tried to use like a, a toothbrush with toothpaste, like fix the scratches on my disc because my Halo Did you 3 really disc. Rub toothpaste on it? Yeah, well, that's what I had read. I still think it's like <laughs> kind of decent, but yeah, like to like fill in the scratches and like stuff like you, you use like toothpaste. Um, but unfortunately, my disc was so far beyond saving. Um, and I still remember when I was in my friend's basement playing Halo 3 and got red ringed to death. Ugh. Ouch. Ouch. That was brutal. He did like the, um, the homemade wrap it in a towel, some janky workaround back then for like red ring of death, and it worked. And really? Kept playing. Oh, wow. Yeah. Oh, see, my, my Xbox got red ring of death, and what my dad did is he went into Best Buy and bought another Xbox 360, but then put the broken Xbox 360. <laughs> in that box and oh returned it and said hey this xbox like doesn't work and has red rings and they were like okay like we'll get your money back and stuff They're like do you want to buy another one or like get warranties like i got warranty and just left and then basically just Peace. got a, a free Damn. xbox <laughs> hey working and then the he system. shattered bug life yep. <laughs> pretty much swindled well props to your father and props to this ad read okay so we all know ExpressVPN protects your privacy and security online, right? But there's something you might not know. You can also use ExpressVPN to unlock movies and shows that are only available in other countries. Now that so many of us are stuck at home, it's only a matter of time before you run out of stuff to watch on Netflix. See, so here's my problem. I only have Netflix and I'm not going to get a bunch of different kind of streaming services. So this week I've been using ExpressVPN to watch Rick and Morty that's only available on the Netflix version that is currently located in France. It's so simple to do. I just fire up the ExpressVPN app, change my location to France, refresh Netflix, and right there pops up Rick and Morty. See, ExpressVPN hides your IP address and lets you control where you want sites to think where you're located. You can choose from almost a hundred different countries so you can think all about the Netflix libraries you can go through. Love anime? Use ExpressVPN to access Japanese Netflix and be spirited away. If you use our special link right now at expressvpn.com slash gg, you can get an extra three months of ExpressVPN for free. Support the show that you watch and protect yourself with ExpressVPN at expressvpn.com slash gg. And welcome back to the GG Over Easy podcast. Now, quickly, that wasn't the only news that uh, came up this week. Obviously, you know what? You'll love it. We've got the Destiny Corner. Seems it yeah. always comes yeah. here. Yeah, I, you know, yeah, I have him on the phone. You have I a guy? I have him on the phone. Yep, okay, I have him on patch the phone. him through. Oh, patch wow. him through. D Deej? Nope, nope, it's you, Blue. <laughs> You're the guy. Oh, you oh, are the Jesus guy. Christ. You are the Destiny oh. 2 expert well, here. well, we have an even better Destiny 2 expert here on the phone with us. It's Fallout Plays. Double oh, experts. Our oh, expert yeah. knows a guy. Like, yeah, oh, that's how... The we know a guy who <laughs> yeah, knows know a guy. guy. It's Blue's the expert expert. Well, oh, I'm the PvE he, expert. He, Fallout's and then the he PvP knows. expert. <laughs> well, that actually... Okay, well, let me just leave with this. Skill-based matchmaking is removed. Hallelujah! You know it's so you know it's so funny because um so they for so long were like there's no there's no skillless matchmaking there's no that, that doesn't exist and then today they're like yeah so we took it out and it's like what 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 did you really think that we okay oh god here's what I'm worried about though that they did that to please and get some people playing PvP because there's not too much to do in the season. And then Beyond Light comes out, and then they don't say anything, and suddenly it's like, wait a minute, my games are sweatier. They turn it back on. I, I wouldn't put it past I them. I hope not. I'm trying to be I a realist. Not. I'm just afraid that's what they're doing. They're like, we got to make some have people happy. Have you guys happy. played the game since skill-based matchmaking is gone? Oh, I have, I'm not, no, not yet. It was not so. People right. running around with the most random stuff. I was using literally random. I was just randomizing my loadouts just to prove a point. And it was fantastic. Did like you make this, a video on it? Yeah. I guess oh, okay. they'll have seen it by now. But I was like, oh. let me test it. I don't want to, you know, maybe I'm getting debated. And sure enough, no. There was like one game, my entire team, nobody had a title. I was like, oh my God. Can't wow. tell you. <laughs> yeah, I, like, I can't tell you the last. <laughs> yeah, I'm used to just unbrokens, flawless, unbrokens, flawless. I was like, now you less, get to play uh, in my skill bracket all the time. Eh, not quite that. I mean, that's. <laughs> I was, whoop. Yeah, it was way low. But now Rumble doesn't have it anymore too, which is a field good. So besides skill-based matchmaking, 
which is probably the smallest. Well, not for fruit, I guess. Not for me. Probably the one of the smaller pieces of news for Destiny this week. Uh, They announced the new expansion, Destiny Two Beyond Light. Uh, Very, very lore heavy season. Uh, It's been they've been setting this one up for a long time. And I mean, we're going to Europa, which was something that we had known about that existed as a location since like Destiny One. Uh, so Aerith, the Ford, Drifter, and the, the Strangers Ford? back, which is crazy oh, yeah. because I thought I thought that was. I mean, I didn't think they were ever. Sammy gonna, freaked out. I I freaked out. I, mean, I didn't think uh, they were ever going to bring her back because Luke Smith literally, was literally like, "Yeah, said, her story's done." Yeah, it was but the it's like, funniest thing ever. By the way, yeah, I don't and it's like nothing. when they were like, "Oh, we thought the, the way they phrased it, they were like, oh yeah, we thought we put yeah. a uh, we we it was wrapped a, it was up a good that ending, nice, nice neat little bow it's on like the who? <laughs> what are you talking about? You, you, know, you thought that was a good? You thought you wrapped that up? Excuse me. So I think it's dope how they've brought it back where she's like well where am i from well i'm from the future where the darkness fucking wins it's like oh shit that's kind of crazy oh fuck uh it looks tight uh she's they showed trunks. off she literally oh she trunks, dude yeah. she's literally trump that's trunks. sick as fuck mr fruit so then dude, who are, blew my mind oh my god. god so wait for, were the for 4chan Goku. leaks real then because like it the they were before. actually for once like they were real right pretty close uh, some of it was a little over the top but they um a lot of the leaks were right where they're they're bringing back d1 stuff they bring back vault of glass eventually they uh the darkness the super strangers bag we're gonna have darkness subclasses that is uh, awesome i'm still there was a, to play the darkness yeah there, there was a different leak several months later that was less uh that i that was when i believed it was significantly less you know like ambitious we'll say that it was significantly less ambitious i believe that one but it turns out that the original 4chan leak was the one that was the real one and i was like wow i've been pleasantly surprised this is tight way to go 4chan but uh, don't often say that it's super exciting to finally be like yeah i mean we've spent the past five years doing absolutely nothing related to darkness now here you actually get to become darkness and it's like i've been waiting for this for a ever since destiny one launched like it's gonna be tight i'm super excited uh and the new season launched fallout have you played any of the new season yeah i played the new season it's fine i mean i'm in my like content creator mode where i'm trying to grind out light level like a chump i want to be ready for trials but like (laughs) (laughs) Uh, i mean (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> confirmed uh yeah it's fine i mean i'm definitely more looking forward to beyond light and year four and all that crap rather than that's just kind of coming back yeah because right, kind of why i, don't I feel like you. i kind of feel like that's why they did this whole reveal pretty much just glossed over like at the end oh yeah by the way uh season 11's out right now um there's a dungeon new dungeon um yeah. uh, okay see the you in september so sick too man i am i've uh, heard the dungeon's hype i haven't i'm gonna do it tomorrow night with uh, the fiance and a friend oh, yeah. I'm really looking forward to it the like, dungeon sick. is is super super sick it's probably my favorite dungeon uh that they've ever released it's really tight i uh-huh. um it's not uh they, they definitely i i don't think they plan on releasing the dungeon this early i think they just wanted to like keep the hype train going like after releasing beyond light because it would be kind of weird if like you release this super hype trailer and then like you're back to having a terrible boring season but it's like, hmm, yeah, we could do that. Or we could show off this new dungeon. Oh, my God, Bungie. They're the best of all time. And it comes out today. Oh. And it comes out today. Yeah, my, yeah, that, that makes sense. <laughs> oh, I don't also, think they plan on releasing it because there's, like, no loot in the dungeon. But the dungeon is sick. <laughs> <laughs> Wait, guys, we forgot about something. The live oh. event was sick. The live oh. event was so tight. Oh, I guess we do have to talk about that. Uh, um, very an hour tight. and a half. Just I kidding, can't get back. Bad. I had so much to do that day. I was like, all right, just take like five, ten minutes. I can fit this in. Oh no! I'm I saw you online like, too in the tower the whole time. I was like, man, this man of perseverance. I didn't even. And then, oh god, I was so. If you think, and maybe I could make a quick video out of this. Be well, I was like, maybe I can put this in. And then I was so salty about it. I was like, I'm not even gonna put this. Screw it, dude. Like everyone's seen it, and they'll seen it better in a in a uh 
a sped up GIF or like yeah, with time, time lapse. lapse. Yeah. yeah. It looks pretty cool in the time lapse, but that took an hour and a half. Like, I think the live event, especially for the first one, it wouldn't have been bad. Like, this is what I think they should have done. When they said everyone get there at, what was it, like 10 hour time, or like 9, 9 a.m. Pacific Standard. What it should have been is at 9 a.m. Pacific Standard, the missiles, or like five minutes after, the missiles come into contact. Because what they should have done is like the hour before leading up, the missiles appear and do that slow crawl. So, so some people who show up are like, yo, go to the tower, like something's happening early. People are like, oh, okay. Like it's ahead of the game. They're not expecting it. And then the people that show up, they're not waiting an hour and a half. Give it like five minutes. That starts to happen. Speed that up a little bit. Explosion, boom, make it take in total, you know, five minutes from when that I happens. Think, and then yeah. I think no one's complaining. Everyone's like, this is sick. 15 minute would have been, like, would have been perfect. Great. Like you show up to the tower and then you're sitting there and you see the almighty get closer. And then over the course of the next 10 minutes, it's like, oh, wow, the lasers do be popping off. And then the last five minutes, boom, just the, the giant payoff. Because it was but, cool when it finally blew up and everything started coming, but I was like... It was cool, yeah. But, like, was it wait for an hour cool. and a half cool? No. no. <laughs> <laughs> and I guess I, I Fortnite has spoiled us because I was expecting... Oh, yeah, 100%. Like, they've set the bar. Like, a Fortnite... Well, they had to have known level. that, too. So it was just very confusing why it took an hour and a half for... Well, what would have been a very tame Fortnite event. Oh, I'm sure, if that was a Fortnite event, everybody would be up in arms. I'm sure they would. Because they've set the bar so high. My favorite was like, even Savala's looking up in the sky. And I was like, oh my god. Like, <laughs> I think it's, um, I think next Indeed. time they have to nail it though, because it, it just shows just how ridiculous Fortnite is and how small Destiny is in the grand scheme of things. Uh, every article that they released about the event was Destiny tries his first Fortnite event. How did Destiny do in his first Fortnite themed event? Oh, oh Destiny right. tries Fortnite events. And it's like, oh, there's just, you Fortnite gotta has just set the bar. Yeah. yeah, the best part were all the memes on Twitter <laughs> during that hour. I was partaking. That was, that was by the, far the best. Part. What else was I going to do for an ass. hour and a half? The Travis Scott memes were the best. Easy, easily <laughs> the best part of the event. My favorite. I would like peep in on sh some streams too, and people would try to be like, "Oh, look at the traveler. Uh, look bottom left. I think there's something. Turn around if you look." At <laughs> and then people are just trying to find something. And no, that was no. literally when like missiles hadn't even shown up yet. And it's just like. That's the thing, too, that they, like, the fact that the missiles didn't show up for, like, 25 minutes. Because everyone thought, like, oh, okay, it's, like, I guess there's, the launch is taking a little while, it's broken. No, it was working as intended. Well, and, like, it wasn't moving in, like, real time, or, like, Or it you know, was like, moving in real time. Well, it That's was, but it was, like, just, like... <laughs> well, they like, wanted like, to like zoom. accurately show, like, like, well, with a ship this big in space and with missiles, it would take this. It doesn't really work for an action game. It's like, man, yeah, that's tight, but like, <laughs> it's like Fortnite. It's like, uh, yeah, like to open a dimensional rift to a Travis Scott concert, it would take millions of. Like, I don't care. I'm trying to watch Travis Scott <laughs> like, pop off. <laughs> like, yeah, sure, I get that physics. As I jump as a warlock and yeah, exactly. Like, <laughs> as I fly into the sky, like. It was a cool attempt. Kind of missed the mark, though. I, I want them to do it again, yes, because yeah. it was a cool event. It can, like only, next it, time, it can only be two better out of than ten. That. You just get a point for even attempting it. I feel like, like it was their uh, like their proof of concept. Like they wanted yeah, to make yeah. this is our first live event. Let's make sure that we can actually do a live event. And they're like, okay, it did work. <laughs> we can prove that we've <laughs> done confirm. a live event. Now let's actually do a good one. <laughs> Hopefully. I mean, like, yeah. like, like, like I said, especially with the feedback, like literally for the next one to be better, all it has to do is be shorter. And I'll be like, yeah, that's better. Just have whatever's going to happen to happen sooner or give I'm a down. more, give a more accurate timeline. Cause it's so misleading to be like, Hey, show yeah, up exactly. at this, and, but actually. And they also tweeted out, we were like waiting for 10 minutes. I think someone tweeted, they were like, uh, yeah, we're just waiting for a couple stragglers to get to the tower. And then like looking back on it, it was like, why did you wait? It took 20 minutes for the missiles to come in anyway. Just yeah. started at 10. When um, I think they, they're like, they're wanting like, well, we want everyone to show up and stuff. One, they did a horrible job of publicizing it. Like yeah. in game, the only notification apparently was like an hour before in game. It's like, Hey, show up at the tower now for the almighty thing. 
Like, what? So oh, unless they'd, like, huh? check Twitter or something, they wouldn't have known. You should have ahead of time. A week ahead of Two weeks ahead of time. I mean, this is, like, the culmination of the season. Be like, hey, so-and-so, or get a mission. They'd be like, oh, we should probably blah, 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 blah. And, and then make it so that, you know, they have given five, maybe ten minutes. Something slow happens or it starts to slow warm up. And then after, like, ten minutes, whoever's not there isn't there. They... At that point, hopefully, they would have known. They made so the it's conscious just, decision to not show up. Yeah, or they're busy otherwise, and then it happens. And that's what Fortnite does. You you know what? You got like a couple minutes. All right, go. Except I think they actually just start right on time anyway. So who knows? Well, but, people also getting like beavered and stuff too isn't great. Um, I did like twice. Oh god. Which thankfully I didn't miss anything. <laughs> so that was the. <laughs> <laughs> Especially the first like forty minutes too. It got. I was like looking on Twitter, and then the music would like do, 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 loop back, and I'm like, oh, that's just okay. Like four minutes later, the music loops back again. Oh, something's happened. Okay, no, I guess it was brutal. Uh, uh. <sighs> but yeah, expansions come in. That's good, exciting. Um, this season, are we gonna get Destiny three or is Destiny no. two? No, just oh, they, now? They, they, were, they, they they straight were, like, up said. Yeah, they just said no. Because, like, it's, it's taken... If they wanted to do D3, they would have to put, according to them, they would have to put D2 on, like, permanent, like, hold hiatus while they work on it or something like that. And also, like, they would have to do another clean slate wipe where we would have to start all over again, which they don't want to do. They can't. They want to make it that, like, the single evolving world. Yeah. Or whatever. So they're just... Which is the right thing to do. Yeah, oh, yeah, I think it's a good idea. I just, like, if they do it right with, like, Ex- cycling the old content out bringing new stuff in if they do it well i think it could be cool but like you know well like i see they're they're getting a lot of flack and i think for good reason like they're removing four planets like literally all the year one stuff just gonna be gone i i'm a little confused because they talk about how they don't want the game to get too big and it's like your game's only 115 gigs like that's mono warfare is not that big a tenth of your game and it's like 300 gigabytes yeah, a Modern Warfare is like a 300 gigabyte game. Every and patch everyone, is like 80 gigs. And the sure, new everyone, tips. And, and sure, everyone, everyone sure, sure, everyone is like, oh, Omega Lol. Uh, <laughs> it, Modern War- I'm really wiping my whole hard drive to get a Modern Warfare update, but it's like people are wiping their hard drive to. That should be the lesson you're learning. People are wiping their hard drive to fit your game, okay? If that doesn't show that nobody cares how big your game gets, then nothing will. Like they. It's a weird design process that I mean, it's Bungie. They do a lot of weird design processes, but but like yeah, the big argument too, you've got room to grow, buddy. And don't even get me started on how big Final Fantasy XIV's file size is. I still installed the shit out of that game. <laughs> but the argument is like, it feels more like because technically, you, except for the free to play players, we purchased that content. That was sixty bucks, exactly. whatever. Yeah, and now that's gone. It. It proves yeah. like this worry where people have is like nowadays we're not buying games, we're renting games, even if we've bought them because we're at the mercy of... We've been renting Bungie games for a long time yeah. now. <laughs> I mean, for the past year we've been renting them. So yeah, like it's, it's a pretty big blow. Even if some of I, I it wasn't a, as popular. I think it's a huge mistake. Yeah, even if it wasn't yeah. as huge as popular, you had the free-to-play players, plus it's stuff like um, stuff to go back to or, or at least... At the very least, you can say, well, there's this stuff to do. Even if you're not going to do it, it's in the game. You can show. But now it's yeah. like, I can't even do it. Here's the only thing that is like making me really hopeful. Because it's like, how many times am I going to Planet Titan? Probably never. Unless I'm going to do something really specific. I'm not spending a lot of time there. Like, what do you mean? Yeah, I go to sit there and watch the waves, bro. <laughs> you just sit there and enjoy the rain. <laughs> uh, so if, they're, if the new content that they're putting in is like super hot fire then yeah i don't care take take whatever out of the game that we're not playing anymore because there's a lot of people not playing that stuff so it all depends on what they're putting into it so if they're putting in the yeah. right stuff and we're like this is the content right here boys then like yeah, I'll feel I'll be down. That. yeah. my um, main concern when it comes to that is new players if you're going to be removing yeah, well, all those me. starting planets you're probably going to be removing the starting campaign what do people start with? Do they start with yeah. Cage is getting murdered on Forsaken? And it's like, that's a Whoa. very... Whoa, it's violent. Yeah. It's like, that's, that's, such a, that's such a weird starting point for a new player. So it's like, what, what, what is the new... What is If their strategy is for their current players, 
that's great. But like, how are you going to grow your game if new players are going to come in super confused and they're basically coming in like, oh yeah, uh, well I saw this really cool planet when I was this this guide by Datto like from five years ago getting started on Destiny Two, and it's like, oh yeah, those plants aren't there anymore. Wait, what? Well, uh, that's that's my Get biggest concern. I don't know if they have like an actual answer for that. To be honest, I don't even know if they thought about that. The only hope I have is like the menagerie is one of the things they're taking away. Maybe that means they're going to bring it back some way. I hope they bring it back updated because menagerie updated and make it relevant. Because I mean, the menagerie yeah. is one of the best things they've added. I think. There's no reason why menagerie shouldn't be something that's updated every season. That activity it could is still good. be so relevant. Yeah. Um, but whatever. So some good news in Destiny, some bad news as per usual, some ups and downs. But this is a W for Destiny for the week. Uh, I would definitely say. I would too. The DLC is looking pretty sp pretty spicy this fall, and we'll have to see. The big thing though too is that DLC looks cool, but then what are the seasons going to look like? Because if we're going to have these same things, all DLC ain't going to carry it. Because if we have you know the repeat of these past three seasons. Yikers, my doggies! Like, I'll hopefully just be they've expansion learned. Eddie. I'll be honest. Like, I'm just gonna be only playing expansion. Yeah, no. the the temporary content it just isn't like it's just not good, man. And I mean, like when I it. went to that um drifters thing, or whatever, and I open it first time, same interface as the bunker, same interface as the pyres, or whatever, whatever the fudge they were the first season. You're doing the same thing to upgrade them the same way. It's like, oh my goodness. I only did it one season. I only did it with the bunkers, and I'm already like, I'm over. I can't imagine doing it twice and then seeing it's the same bounty farm. The one cool thing, I do like the story missions. So every week that'll be cool to come back and see that evolve with like the, yeah. um, the tree and stuff. I'll give them that, and at least there's a dungeon. But aside from that, it's a new public event, which is just like scuffed gambit. And yeah, that's what we got. So it's a no. I'm hype. But it's exactly also what the other seasons have been. Hype. Yeah. Like, I assume it's also because it's one of those things where they were so far into it rather than like trying to course correct this last season, barely probably just focus them on later resources and fixing hopefully the future seasons. Cause there's probably only so little they could have done to even change this season. Like I believe this is just a hunch. But I'm willing to bet that that armor you can get from the dungeon was originally Eververse armor because there's no Eververse I, armor this season. Yeah, that's what I. I, and I, I think agree the that, backlash they threw it in. They're like, okay, just yes, hundred percent. I don't think that this dungeon <laughs> was drag. The loot, literally the loot alone <laughs> is like they were they weren't planning on releasing this this early this season. Like they were planning on having an entire Dido weapon line, but they were like, oh, we got to I mean, we got to give them something. Yeah. So, I mean, at the very least, it gives some people something to be hyped about right now. And then the good news is for other players, especially me, like I'm slowly grinding light. It means they have something to work towards, at least. It's not just another monotonous light level grind. At least they're like, okay, well, at least let me get to a light level so I can beat the dungeon. So that's yeah. something. Yeah. But um, yeah, that's the Destiny news. All right, we're going to move uh, on to Patreon questions. Uh, we got a little bit of time, so we'll just squeeze these in. Uh, shout out to the Patreon stands. We appreciate you. Um, so this first question is from uh, Jelly. Uh, Fallout, we'll start with you. It says, what is the worst part about of being a content creator, and what is the best part of being a content creator? Uh, the worst part is everything. Uh, <laughs> how much time I sit in this chair. Uh, just like uh, dragging clips around. Oh, this looks good. No, let's raise the volume on that clip. Gosh, it's terrible. Like, you need to like go outside and, and interact with people. But um, but when you have uh, like that moment where people are like commenting nice things, you're like, oh, dude, I watched that video. It was hilarious. It was great. Like your content. Like I was having a bad day, and your your video made me laugh or something like that. I was like, oh, that's cool, man. That makes the worst me part is you're your own job. The best part is you're your own boss. Yeah. But that that the the okay. Let me rephrase that because I fucked up. Best part, you're your own boss. Worst part, you're your own boss. Yeah. I, the worst. Like, I I love the fact that like, I'm my own boss, but it's also I'm a I'm a creature of like structure. Like I need structure. So like the fact that like I don't have to like 
clock in, you know, to like a, a boss or something like that is really kind of weird. But I mean, the best part is just playing with your homies. Like that's my favorite part. And that's all it ever has been is just playing with my friends. Um, Like all the cool stories too. When you like, you meet like fans and stuff like that at conventions and stuff. That's always really fun and awesome. The worst part. I mean, there's a couple parts that aren't like great. I think one of them is one, what it's done to the view of games or like my gaming passion. Like ultimately, no matter what, it's changed it for me. Some people yeah. maybe are different and it seems like especially like some Twitch, like like live streamers have um, apparently don't like don't seem to burn out as easily, which is crazy to me because if I had to play one game that much, I'd burn out. But for me, I look at games so much differently now. Um, especially with like how little time I is or time I have. It's essentially, can I make content on that game? Yes. No. No. Move aside. Yes. What could I make? One video. Great. That's what I'm gonna get out of it. Um. So in that regards, and then when I'm not working, it's really hard to just game because then it's yeah. like I could be recording. Because you've been Should gaming be already. Like, yeah. yeah, yeah like, like I could be recording this. Yeah. So I'd say probably that's one of the worst parts. Um. And then. The best part is being able to be um, creative however you want and then seeing how that um, impacts other people. Um, seeing how your videos have helped other people or um, even just entertained. Being able to put something out there and get immediate feedback is just really cool. The other bad part I would say is analytics. They'll eat you alive. Yeah. And as easy as it is to be like, oh, just don't look at it. Or like, hey, uh, it's it's just a number. Or like whatever. It's my job. It's my livelihood. I've been on the. Yeah. And it's literally like everything. Like it's. Everything like is. I open YouTube. It goes, hey, here's your latest <laughs> video. Ooh, it'll literally say, your, your, view, your video is reaching less subscribers and less people are clicking on it. Your view time is down. Your impressions are down. Your watch time is down. Oh, God. Red oh, arrows oh, everywhere. God. Red numbers. You've only gained X amount of subscribers. That's down 37% from last month. Here's all. And you're just like, but you got more down votes. <laughs> yeah, it's just like, yeah, well, like dislikes are up. Oh, okay, great. <laughs> it's like, yes, I know I've been on a downward spiral in the last four months. I've been the flat, at least or the worst four months of my content creation career. Thank you, YouTube. I appreciate that. That's what I'll uh, get to you. We'll do one more question here from Elijah Jackson. Uh, we'll start with Fallout again. It says, any plans to stream or upload The Last of Us Part 2? Oh man, uh, that's a great question. I don't know if I'll upload. I definitely want to play it on Twitch though. I uh, The Last of Us, I played it with my fiance for the first time. I had no idea what I was going to play. Ooh. Like I didn't, Yeah, I didn't experience. She had played it. Uh, this was one week before we lived together. She had like gone home for spring break or something like that and uh, played the whole game uh, with like her with her cousin and her uncle. We got a grinder. And, yeah, total grinder. This kid's a grinder. And then uh, came back and she was like, we got a game that you got to play. Don't look it up. Please don't look it up. And I was like, okay, great. Uh, played it. It was awesome. I just loved the storytelling and the characters. Mm -hmm. uh, just sick. And uh, yeah, the new one's coming out. It looks way darker. Super dark. But uh, I'm totally down. Like, it just looks great. So yeah, I'm in. Uh, Blue? I got super lost in what you guys were talking about. I'm not going to lie. What was uh, the question? Do you have any plans to just, uh, stream or to upload oh. with part two? I don't know, man. I feel like that's the type of game I'm just going to play on my own. Yeah. I, I don't want to stream it because I'm scared of spoilers. And I like playing story games on stream, but like, uh, it's the la last of us was like one of my favorite games of all time. Yeah, so I, I want to play two like on my own probably. I don't have a PlayStation 4 anymore, so uh, I don't know if I'm going to. And then it's like too late. Like, I'm not going to buy one just to play this. So I probably end up like won't end up playing it, honestly. I still haven't played the first Last of Us. What? So... What's wrong with you? Dude, it's really good. Well, I know I've only ever heard good things. Um, but am I going to be able to find time to beat it before the second part comes out? Yes. No. Probably not. No. What do you mean? Not like, I mean, literally, I just probably won't have enough time. I would have to devote all my free time in it. I don't know if that's what I want to do. 
Because here's the thing, I won't be able to do anything with The Last of Us 2. That's not content for me. I won't be able to... Nobody Just will as be, you said previously in the earlier question. Yeah. No one's yeah. going to be a... Uh, yeah. Most story games, unfortunately, it has to be like, yeah, I probably can't do anything. Which is why, again, like me playing through Horizon was like, that's insane. Because I devoted my extra time to beating that game. So, unfortunately, probably not. Um, hopefully, I'll find a way, or, or maybe, it will, probably won't be at release, but at some point, yes. Is that our well, I questions? I think that uh, wraps it up for the Patreon questions. Um, Thank you, Patreon I think that wraps it up for the uh, GG Over Easy podcast as well. Uh, Fallout, thank you so much for joining us today as Fallout, the you first tight. official guest of the 40s. The, the <laughs> Roaring Board. 40s? I don't know what they uh, call it. Hey, look, thank you so much for having me on your show. You all are great. Fun time. Uh, really appreciate it. No, thank your you. Fun time. And hopefully uh, we'll get a uh, on the internet fallout. I uh, just Google fallout plays. You'll find me youtube.com <laughs> slash fallout plays twitch.tv slash fallout plays Twitter at fallout plays. Yeah, yada, yada, yada. I'm jealous. What about you, blue? You can find me everywhere at blue. Oslo. Uh, twitch.tv slash Robbie V. I wish I had some brand consistency, man. Twitter's like Mr. Fruit YT. Instagram is Mr. Fruit gaming. YouTube is my Mr. Fruit. Just we should Mr. try and make Fruit. a day and just try and get all the same tags. I've tried. The same handles. Oh, but everybody already snipes mine or whatever, dude. Doesn't matter. That's this episode. Thank you very much for listening and or watching. However you consume this podcast, we appreciate you. We love you. Hope you have a great week and we'll see you next Sunday. <laughs> Bye.